research report in a couple of years. Although we're the richest country, supposedly, mm -hmm. you dig? And um, so they, um, I was trained in Los Angeles, and they said, hey, look, you know, we got this opportunity for you. You got everything to win, nothing to lose, okay? I said, okay, fine. You're going to be fighting the most dangerous one in the world. And I laughed. And they said, why you laugh? I said, because my mom's the most dangerous one in the world. You know what I mean? And I laughed. You know, if I survived her for 18 years, hey, world, you, you lightweight. You did So anyway, so I went ahead and took the opportunity. And here I am sitting down with all my trainers. Bob Wall. Bob Wall starred uh, alongside Bruce Lee. And Enter the Dragon. So he had, uh, you know, the big guy, you know, him and Joe Nard. Him, that's Bob Wall. Bob Wall's a very good friend of mine. He's the one who got all my kickboxing fights for me, including the championship fight. Yeah. So, anyway, to make a long story short, um, they got me. We're sitting down, we're watching, you know, her on television. We're watching her and David Letterman. And David Letterman says, How can you be the most dangerous woman in the world and you ain't fought nobody in America yet? That makes sense, right? Right, right. 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 You ain't fought nobody in America yet. Mm -hmm. Then she said, oh, well, then I, I, that's why I'm here. I'm here to fight Fledia Gibbs. You know, she's number one in USA. You know, so that was cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, finally, we get a chance. We, uh, what they do is they, they see me training because I'm training with the Thais. I didn't train with many Americans. I trained with the originals from Thailand. Mm -hmm. So I trained with the Thais, et cetera, and I was in the yes. best shape of my life, you know, and it was really cool. Make a long story short, um, my trainer, I felt like he was a part of them because he kept saying, spitting negative things at me all the time, like the enemy, you know? Yes. And that the enemy was spitting negative things at you to try to discourage you and stop you and block you and all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was trying to get in my mind. And, um, you know, then I went ahead and got with the Thai guy and I told my main guy, the Bob said, I said, hey man, look, I need you just to stay away from my trainers. You know what I mean? I said, because I'm not stepping into this man to lose. You know, you don't know me. You don't know where I come from. You know, I'm stepping in this to win. I'm stepping in this to leave with my hands raised, man. You dig? So anyway, we love uh, the fight night, fight night. The day of the fight, this is not supposed to happen. This is how I knew I was the underdog. The day of the fight, we drive in 10 hours what? in a, in a, in a uh, what do you call it? A, uh, what, wagon? Oh, wagon? Yeah, 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 they had to put a little mat in the back for me to sleep. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so I slept all the way. I just slept. Because I know me. I know when I sleep, my supernatural powers are about to take place, mm -hmm. emerge. Am I making sense to you? Mm -hmm. But I know me. Mm -hmm. So here I am sleeping back there all the time. We get there. It was unbelievable. You would have thought that Prince Michael Jackson, the press conference, it was major. I knew it was major because you had all Hollywood martial arts stars there. You know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, we go in the press conference. I walk in, I had my shirt off, you know, showing my physique and everything. And she was there in her little mono outfit looking like um, Blojo, I mean, uh, 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 jo, J Lo, you know, at a ball event. So she was looking fly. I got to give her props. She was looking fly. They were asking her all these questions about the fight. It was all about her. So then they finally come to me and ask me one question. They said, well, Fredia, what is it that you have to say? I said, I just want to let you know I'm the one your mama warned you about. <laughs> that was it. And they looked at me. What was that? I, and I looked her dead in her face. I am the one your mama warned you about. That's it. And then she says, well, where's Chester? We looked on the map. We didn't see Chester. Where is it? You'll see it. Okay. Anyway, so they take me back. They take me back to her luxurious room. Her luxurious room and everywhere she's resting. They put me in a closet with no mirrors. The light was blinking. You know what I mean? And I knew that I was the underdog. You know, because I, they didn't know that I come from royalty. They didn't know I was an all-American in track. They didn't know I was an all-American in basketball. So they didn't know that I'm accustomed to the right type of treatment. But they didn't know this. You did so anyway, I step out of the, the, the room there while you know everybody's going doing their thing. I call my mom, I call my grandma, I call my mom, and we's on two. I say, hey, look, these guys think they got they trying to set me up. My mom said, Well, look at here. You go out there and you tell them. You go out there and you tell them I said the only most dangerous woman in this world is me. You understand? And you go out there and you show her. You know, let her know that she's the one that mama warned you about. Bam, okay, fine. I talked to my grandma. Grandma, these guys are trying to set me up. Grandma, she said, listen, you just keep God first as you want. Amen. Yes. You just keep God first. Yes. You say the right thing, you do the right things, you make the right things happen. 
Okay. Now, keep, that's the grandma I'm saying, all right? That's the grandma I'm saying. So I talked to my mom and grandma. My mom's birthday is August 15th. My grandma's birthday is August 16th. Okay? Wow. So anyway, I'm sharing that with you for a reason. Okay? So anyway, here I am. They call me Pleaky and Gibbs. You're up. You're next. I go stand out there. I'm like, oh, my God. I didn't know it was that huge. I've never been in a stadium that big before in my life, or really that big before in my life. But I knew it was pay per view, cameras, everything. Then as I'm going through, I hear somebody yell, hey, that's the black girl who came here to get knocked out. And I got mad. You know, it takes a lot to get me mad. As a kid, my mom used to always say, get her mad, get her mad. But it took a lot to always get me mad. But when he said that, I got mad. And as I was getting closer, hey, nigga. You're going to get knocked out today. And I got hey. mad. And at that time, I said, Father, tonight Woo. we're going to shock the world. Yes. That's it. As I was walking down toward the ring, mm -hmm. that's when you saw the fight. Make a long story short, after I shocked the world, I was I lived in Marina, Marina Del Rey, and I saw the referee. We have to bump into each other. It was by design. It was. <laughs> it was by design. We bumped into each other. And I said, hey, aren't you the referee, the referee? He's like, you. He's like, oh my God. He said, listen, you, that was the biggest roar that I ever heard in my life. I can never forget it. He said, when you won. He said, that was the biggest roar. He said, hey, listen, you know, um, I got something for you. You know, so he gave me his address and connect that and And he gave me this picture right here of when I knocked Valerie Hennon out. I want to share this with you right here. And it got him right there closing us out, referee saying she's out. Right. He said, listen, I want to apologize to you. I said, for what? He said, listen, they paid me to irritate you, to frustrate you, you know what I mean, to, to stop you. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, that's why I was always in your face. I said, hey, listen, man, I have overcome so many obstacles and challenges in my life. Again, you have nowhere idea where I come from. You have no idea what I've been through. You have no clue that I am a standing miracle right here today. Uh, yeah. You didn't know, but I know. You understand? Mm -hmm. They had no clue. Anyway, the reason why I say that, August 16th, I knocked her out. My hands were raised. <laughs> Here's the clock right here. That said August 16th. My mom's birthday, I talked to her. See, it's August 16th. Yeah. 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 You see that there? Yeah. My mom's no birthday. See that there? Yeah. See that there, August 16th, my hands raised. You see that? August 16th, hands are raised. You did, and the hands are raised, August yeah. 16th. Yeah. 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 You know, by God there. And the reason why, and I'm just happy to be here because I wanted to share yeah. the story, that not only have I experienced uh, being poor, you know, been raised in the project, which I didn't think that we were poor growing up, you know what I mean, but once I left, the pond and went out in the yeah. jungle and went out in the ocean, I realized that I, we are, you know what I mean? But I didn't realize it then. You know, so for being poor from uh, being bullied all the time, can you imagine? You know, I was once bullied. Can you well, believe that? No. Yeah, for a very, very long time. That's how I was able to get into martial arts. And that's the only reason why I got into martial arts is because I was bullied all the time. So my self-confidence was very low. My self-esteem was very low. I wanted to kill myself. Just imagine if I killed myself, I would not have done God's will. Yes. Yeah. Just imagine if I made that choice to finish myself off because I was being bullied. Just imagine, I would have never done God's will. I would never be standing right here in front of you. I would have never made American history and black history. That makes sense? Yes, yeah. yes. So that's why I want to share with you about choices. And I survived being abused. I was child abused. You know what I mean? Mom didn't know that. You know, but I survived all these things. So what I want to share with you is, God, you know, in life, we all blessed with a gift. And life ain't nothing but a race anyway. This is what I'm telling you. It's a race. The day we born is a race. So we run each and every day in life. Am I making sense? It don't yes. matter. You're going to run, and I'm going to share this with you. You're going to run, and you're going to fight. Okay? This is just inevitable. You're going to run in life, and you're going to fight. That's why it's important that you wear your whole armor of God. I shared that with you, too. Yes. Okay? But you're going to run, you're going to fight, you're going to have the enemy coming at you, you know what I mean? And the enemy's going to test you, but he has permission to test you, because God wants to take you to another level, but you've got to pass the test. Yes. Am I making sense to you? Huh? So there's lots of stairs that we have to, to go up, uh, up, climb. And you know what? I am very fortunate to say that, uh, you know, 
There's not too many people like me and Wilma Rudolph and Venus Williams and Serena Williams. You know what I mean? To actually have bronze statues being made in their honor. That says something special, doesn't it? Huh? Doesn't that say something special, Chad? That's really special. You know? But the most important thing is that, you know, I have not forgotten where I come from. You know? So that's the best part. Anyway, moving forward on that, I wanted to go over this here with you real quickly. It's about mindset. And it's so important that I get you kids while you're young now because you're green. When I say you're green, you know what I mean? When I say you're young.